today. Definitely today. So I have somebody come over to talk with me this morning, and I was wondering if Bobby would mind if I use Jake's old office. Uh, wrong. I uh, mean Scott's <laughs> office. Mm-mm, wrong again. One more try and I'm out. <laughs> would you believe the empty office? There you go. Give that man a cigar. And no, I don't think she'd mind at all. But I'd ask her anyway. Right. Yeah. Bobby, it's Tom. Are you awake? I hate to bother you so early. Early? Are you kidding? I got up with the birdies. I gotta get this apartment rented today. I'll try. All I'll right. try. I'll try. Would you like some orange juice? No, uh, thank you. But I do have a favor to ask of you. Ask away. I was wondering if I could do Scott's off. I mean, uh, the empty office you have downstairs to talk with someone from the team center. Tom, you can use the office anytime you want, as long as it's empty. I appreciate it, Bobby. You're a peach. Charm. We'll and a plum. And all those good fruits. <laughs> Go to work. Thanks. <laughs> I got it. Oh, great, great. Right. Ooh, Bobby's first customer. Morning. Hi. <laughs> How are you? Sorry. It's okay. I was hoping to catch Felicia. Is she in? Uh, yes, Bill? she is. Well, it's you. i tell you what. How about a nice brisk walk down by the waterfront, and then we'll stop in at Kelly's and have some breakfast. What do you say? Oh, Colton, I don't know. Do you have other plans? Oh, well, no, not really. Uh, well, I sure wish a, a handsome guy would uh, make me an offer like that. I'd love to. Thank okay. you for coming. Great. Come on. Uh, Bye. Bye. See you at the station. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Colton just came by and uh, took Felicia to breakfast. Well, good. She yeah. needs diversion. I know. Well, especially since it's her anniversary coming up. Well, the closer it gets, the more she misses Frisco. Oh, speaking of Felicia, I can't find that package that came for her the other day. Oh, uh, uh, no, I picked it up and, and took it to my room and everything, oh. so I would remember to give it to her, and naturally I have forgotten to give it to her. So I'm going to go upstairs and bring it back down. Thanks. I'm getting senile. <laughs> so, okay. Uh. Oh, foo foo. Oh, please, be the perfect person. Today's the day. We've got to be the Yes, I know. Why is it when nobody else seems to notice? Oh, maybe not. Come on, sit down. Two of you. What can I get you, two charming people? Cheryl? Toast will be fine. Okay. And you? Ah, uh, I think a Danish. And some coffee. Fine. Coming right up. So, how's the, the uh, redecorating going over at uh, Labor's? Oh, well, they were all hard at work this morning when I left. Mm hmm So, what's up with you today? <laughs> Have you ever seen a dame from down under wearing a granny cap and nightgown? No, but I take it you have. Not by choice. <laughs> I happened upon my cousin sleeping on the sofa over at Sean, so I beat a hasty retreat. Figured I'd let Tiff and Sean deal with that one. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see another body. I'm really sorry. Don't worry, it's okay, Prunella. It's fine. Um, you know, I'm rather famous for my breakfast down under, and in appreciation for the sofa, I'd like to make you both something you'll remember forever. Meaning? 
Meaning that the man gets up at dawn, disappears, <laughs> and I have to deal with Prunella. Does this mixture look all right to you? Do you think it needs more marmalade or more grape jam? Uh, maybe a little more grape, I think. I reckon you're right. Yeah. Have you talked to Robert about her? How can I talk to Robert about her? He's never around. Well, then why don't you call him at his office? Well, I've tried calling him. He, It'll just be a tiny tick of the clock longer. The toast is stuck in the bloody toaster. Oh. <laughs> I've had it. Oh, I'm no, going to the station. Oh, sweetheart. No, 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 no you're not, not going to leave me around. Come am. on. You know, she's rattled you a few just as much as she's rattled no, me. No, sweetheart. You put cream in my coffee, Sean. Uh, I did. Oh, I did. Here we go to super duper place of our famous mixture. Where's Tiffany? Uh, she had an early meeting for now. Oh, really? Well, why don't you sit down and we'll have breakfast together? Uh, Here we go. well... meeting this morning? Certainly not. I was speaking to Monica, Edward. Oh. Well. Oh, you know, Lucy Jones said something about that last night. I was so exhausted. I really, I, well, I think I was a bit rude with her, but I, I don't know what it's about. Well, it's a project of Audrey's and something that she feels very, very close to. How much is that going to cost? It's going to make money, Edward. <laughs> I'll bet. Anyway, Monica, do try and come to the meeting because Audrey can explain everything to you much better than I can. Okay, I'll try. I beg your pardon, Mr. Quartermain. A letter for you, sir. Oh, thank you, Jennings. Oh, my God. It's from Tracy. Don't you dare tear up that letter. Oh. Wasn't, um... What's his name? Her son, Ned. Ned. Wasn't he supposed to be coming over the summer? Yes, he was. I never agreed to that. Oh. Well, I did. He's our grandson, Edward. Oh, dear. Bad news? Well, Ned's off on a, on a bike tour of Europe. <laughs> Good news. He won't, be, he won't be able to come here until four. Well, then maybe then he'll think about going skiing in the Alps. His poor Charles will remain secure. You don't want to see your own grandson, Edward? It's just that when he's here, I'm constantly reminded of the source of his origin. Tracy is your daughter, Edward. Now don't remind me. I have enough problems right here at home with my own daughter-in-law. What was that supposed to mean? It means I'm getting sick and tired of asking about the state of affairs of this assistant chief of staff position. Then stop asking. Yeah, I started with these cigars when I gave up cigarettes. I see. Well, I think it's very admirable that you gave up smoking, but you see, nobody at the Brownstone smokes it. Oh, I don't smoke. I just chew the holy moly out of these suckers. See? I see. And I come equipped with my own cuspidor. Oh? Excuse me one minute. Yeah, you go right ahead, little lady. Hello? Oh, yes, Dr. Hardy's here. Hold on one minute, though. I have to get him. Tom? Telephone for you. Would you have to take it up here? I'll be right there, Bobby. Uh, well, I'll be in touch. And uh, I don't drink. I don't throw wild parties. This is my only vice. Well, that's terrific, and that's in your favor, so I will definitely be in touch. Tom Hardy here. Tom? It's Louise. Louise, good morning. Um, I'm at a pay phone. That's promising. Is it? Um, I was on my way over, and uh, I just kind of stopped off here. Okay. Well, I'm not so sure it's okay. What do you mean? Well, I don't... I have decided to cancel our meeting. Why do you want to cancel? Well, I was thinking about last night. 
and uh, I, I feel I was probably overreacting. And uh, yes, Louise. I, I think you were right, but I think that I should really work this out for myself. Well, I'm, I'm sure you know what's best for yourself. Listen, there is something that I would like to talk to someone about. Only, uh... Only what? Well, the brownstone. It's so public. What would people think? People won't think anything. I'm in an office here. There's a private entrance. No one in the house will see it at all. You just use the sidewalk steps. Well, that sounds all right. I feel foolish. Why, though? This is textbook stuff, you know? We all qualify for that book, myself included. You're good. Am I? Yes. Please stay on the line after you complete your call for additional charges. I'm out of change. Listen, Louise, I'll, I'll be here for at least another half an hour, so if you don't like coming by, we'll talk. If not, I'll see you at the teen center. Oh, I hope she doesn't try to go this alone. We're all in this alone, Doc. Bobby, I didn't know you were there. Oh, Problems? Mm, you name it. I'm serious. <laughs> Go ahead, Doc. Nothing I can't handle. You're a tough guy, huh? No, some days I don't feel so tough. Well, listen, I've got some free time, so if you'd like to talk about it. You're nice, thanks, but I'll be okay. I'm just a terrible headache. You feel better. Okay. You know where to find me if you need me. My added responsibilities with Mrs. Hardy's Arts Committee, I'm going to need the most reliable people working in the daycare center. Well, absolutely, but where do I fit in? You make sure that we get the best. I have nothing to do with assignments. Just keep your eyes and your ears open to whom the very best are, okay? And I'll handle the rest. Can you manage that? You can count on it. I will count on it. Right. Nurse. Uh, yes, ma'am. You're wanted in clinic. Staff. Right away. Was she really? What? Wanted. No, I wanted to talk to you privately. Oh, well, just I'm very flattered. Don't be very flattered, Mrs. Jones, because I don't ever, ever, ever want to see you talking to one of my medical personnel again. Is that clear? Well, you know, I, I would never dream of doing Good that. morning, Jessie. Lucy, my dear. Hi, Amanda. Amanda. And Lucy, I'm so delighted you're going to work on the committee, the new committee, you know, because you've done such a wonderful job for the daycare center. Isn't that so, Jessie? It's coming along nicely. Oh, it's doing very well, Jesse. Very well indeed. Thanks to Lucy. Oh, thank you, Amanda. That's very kind of you. Oh, nonsense. You've done a very great service to General Hospital with your facility. Isn't that so, Jesse? General Hospital needs all the help it can get. We can't uh, be proud. Excuse me. Oh, dear, dear, dear. She does have her dander up this morning, doesn't she? Hmm. Was it something I said? Oh, no, no, man, of course not. Oh. Well, listen, I have a meeting with, with Dan Rooney, so if you'll just excuse me, I'll see you later at the Arts Committee gathering. All okay. right, I'll see you there. All right. Um, Jesse, would you make sure that I'm paged when the, when my constituents from the Arts Committee arrive? More coffee? No, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you. Yeah, and I'll freshen that up a little bit. There you go. Thanks, Mom. Okay. Now, where will we? I forgot. Library's club. Mm. Anyway, these warnings, they scare me. Because it means that somebody at the top isn't happy. I don't understand. Look, this, this family business isn't just confined to the movies, you know. Oh, it's not. You ever heard the old saying that art imitates life? But for instance, uh, most of the mature poet laureates stole for their inspiration. Really? In fact, Shakespeare was a great storyteller, provided somebody told 
Shakespeare the story first. I'm lost. Do you remember Macbeth? Yeah. What does Macbeth have to do with Duke? Both are from Scotland. Yeah. Both are ambitious. If you say so. Uh, you remember the part where Macbeth has Macduff's wife and children slain? Vaguely. Well, that's the bit that bothers me. Robert, you don't really believe Duke would do anything to hurt Anna or Robin. No, I don't. I know he loves them both. But accidentally, he may lead them into harm's way. You're still in love with Anna, aren't you? I'm... I'm worried about my daughter. You don't think she's safe at camp? Safer, huh? but far away. I miss her. That's natural. We, uh, we talked about you. You did? Hmm. She, um, she wanted to know how serious I was about you. What'd you say? You changed the subject. Hi, kids. How are you?